Welcome to Think Big for Africa podcast. On this podcast, we will bring you interesting conversations with local, national, and international African leaders from all works of life, home and abroad. Leaders who are doing their bits to progress Africa's development. Conversation topics will range from education, science, health, leadership, politics, business, and many other global issues. Conversations about everything that concerns Africa's development. Africa has so many wonderful achievers worldwide, and this is exactly what we will bring to you on Think Big for Africa podcast. Stay tuned. See, how can we open the minds of our brothers and sisters to see beyond what their pastors say to them to start asking questions because i know i know for a fact africa will not ever develop until africans Africans start asking questions, start thinking deeply about what we want and where we want to be. What do we want to contribute to the world until we start thinking? And I know for a fact that the Christian church doesn't encourage people to think. I have experienced it, okay? So I know for a fact that the Christian church does not encourage anyone to think. You know, it's very sad, Kenny, that you you know, the, 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 the average pastor and priest out there does not encourage people to think because the Bible tells me differently. One of my favorite passages is in the book of Timothy, which says, study to show yourself approved yes. rightly dividing the word of truth being ready to defend your faith in and yes. out of season you know and the idea there is study yes. and in the old testament because some people say no the old testament no but even in the old testament it says come let us reason together yes so what is to reason that means to when, use I, when i was a, when i was a christian those those mm -hmm. passages were my favorites <laughs> oh because yeah. you're a, a seeker the, Yes. When I was a seeker so, so we, in, mm. in Christianity, those passages mm. were my favorite. That's what I what I yes. used to, to show people who accuse me of being uh, overly intellectual about Christianity. Mm. I tell them the yeah. Bible encourages encourages us to actually study. Okay, so it's important for us to study. But now, yes. we are not doing that. Yes. And we need to do that if we ever want our continent to develop. See, let, let, me, just take it, let me just take it this way. See, I believe mm -hmm. humanity is one family. Okay? Yes. And I look at Africa today. The Chinese are doing things across Africa. And I see 30 years from now, a lot of Chinese will be living in Africa. Yeah. Okay. Now, if, if we do not elevate our thinking, do not elevate our knowledge, the Chinese will come to Africa and they will dominate Africans. Yep. And then we will start shouting, oh, racism. Away with the Chinese. <laughs> yes. Okay. We we'll start shouting we'll start racism. start the song again. Yes. Now, the only way for us to, to, to make sure that 
domination. That's the word I'm uh, using. Domination does because see again, the Chinese are going to come, and I encourage it. Okay, right now I'm living in the UK. Okay, so the world, like you said, is a global village. Okay, so people who move all around the world. So yes, oh. Africa has resources that other continents we want okay so it's not it's not wrong for them to come to our, and live in, in africa i want that but for us at home not feel not feeling for us to not not to feel dominated we need to elevate our own standards in knowledge so how can we do that because the, the, I love that. Church, I'm going to, yeah. The church doesn't encourage that. And that would it's be very unfortunate. Very they, they, they should. To Africa. Yes. No, they should. They should. Because you see, one of the first things um, right at the foundation, there are three things to elevate, but right at the, at the foundation. And this is absolutely essential for our, for our, for our progress as a people. Mm. At the foundation, we must take responsibility. We, you see, and, and the term responsibility has two words, response to ability. Yes. So anybody with power is given responsibility. Remember, if you have no power, no one will give you a responsibility. Yes. So meaning you've exhibited the ability to manage. Yes. Uh, that's the terminology I like. We are all born to be stewards. God put in us a power of stewardship. We are stewards over whatever God has given us and it's our domain. Mm. And God will never give you something to manage that you haven't got the capacity to manage. He will always give you something that you have the capacity within you to manage. So all this wealth around us, God knew we have the capacity to manage it. Yes. So, but the, the, the challenge is that obviously that was cheated from us for reasons we won't get into. But then for us to, to begin the journey back, we must take responsibility. And what do I mean by this? We must stop blaming others. Yes. Because when you blame people, you take your power and pass it to the thing you blame. Exactly. So if you keep blaming colonialists, then you are empowering them. If yes. you keep blaming the church and religion, you are empowering mm. it. And so we must move away from that and get back to saying, wait a minute, I'm the king of my own domain. Yeah, this is my domain. This is my zone. And this is where God put me. And it means if he put me here and he put this kind of thinking inside of me, it means I have the power to change. Yeah. And remember, revolutions were started by people that woke up. <laughs> Think mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. You know, one day you, you oppress people for thousands of years, but then one day people just say, wait a minute, we are 5,000. There's two of them. What, what's wrong with us? Let's just go for it. Ah! And then the whole crowd comes <laughs> and I don't care power you have <laughs> that's called <laughs> power you know it's a revolution in mm. the words of the black panther it's a revolution and once a revolution begins no one can stop it i mm. don't care how powerful they are they can't stop it and that's why the people in power know that you have to use psyops and mm. you know psyops religion is one of the most powerful psyops operations you'll ever find yeah. because the idea is to dominate the mind you know tell them about god and that he's all seeing and whatever you're going to do is going to have repercussions and the, the, you're going to burn in hell forever and ever if you, do, if you argue against his people on earth who are his appointed anointed ones you know that kind of stuff and now there's a lot of truth in there but it's been all messed and mashed up to suit the agenda of the person telling you this narrative yeah so that you fear and you cower in submission and so the first thing we must take responsibility we must own our mistakes what have we done wrong why are we where we are we must own this yes as africans we cannot continue the same story about the white man and whatever yes it's a huge problem and so for example people like myself the message first is show the problem now once people recognize the problem then not good 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 now we don't want to be to have a pity party on that no 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 yes. that's not the objective the objective is let's own it what part did i play play to empower yeah because this this whole power of religion this whole power of uh, neo-colonialism and whatever and the chinese and whoever it's up it's us 
Yeah, we are the ones who invite these people. It's not like they just come and, and, and all of a sudden they own all this land and they have factories. Yeah. No, somebody invited them. Somebody signed contracts. Yeah. Somebody told them, please take, take, take. They don't just show up here without the local cooperation of those yeah. in power. So which means we must own it. It is us. And here's the part people don't like, uh, Eneke. I mean, Ekene. Even slavery could not happen until someone facilitated I, it. I agree and it's with the you same totally. Chiefs. It's the same chiefs. It's our same forefathers who sat with these white men and received guns, jewels, trinkets, and, and, yeah. and, and, and exchange them. Like, okay, this mirror, two people, take two people. You know, this, this gun, you can take five. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. So yeah. we have to own it. That's number one. Yes. Now, once we own this, once we accept this, then comes the next level. There's a word you used. You said, Walter, how do we raise the standard? That's yes. it. That's the second. Yes. We must raise our standard. We cannot agree to continue in mediocrity. Mediocrity is not in our DNA. And if you want to prove that, go into our history that has been so cleverly hidden for the last 600 years. There has been a deliberate ploy by the establishment to expunge history of black achievement. Yeah, I Between agree. the year 700 AD and 1400 AD, did you know that black people dominated in economics, in science, in technology, in politics, in, in governance? We dominated the world. Now, people don't want to accept that, but it's a fact. Mm. If you go back to the time of Egypt and Alexandria, did yeah. you know that the Greeks were so, so mesmerized yeah, by yeah, yeah. the work that. Yeah. of the Egyptians mm -hmm. that they actually dedicated an entire city to Egypt, Alexandria, yeah. and it became the center of learning. I, I was stunned when I learned that the library of Alexandria had 400,000 books. Yeah. And somebody told me that we couldn't read and write. Please. We had 400,000 books. The Greeks who are credited for modern science and knowledge gleaned all their science from Kemet people, from Egyptians. They yeah. got mathematics, medicine. You know, we, 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 we credit a lot of Greeks, not we, they, the establishment, credit a lot of Greeks as being the fathers of philosophy. But the truth is they gleaned it from the Kemet people, from the Egyptians who began to teach this stuff 3,500 B.C. C, yeah. Okay. B.C. The Nubian, uh, uh, Kush, Kushite kingdoms, 2,000, 1,000 B.C. When Solomon was prospering in, yeah. um, in Israel. Kemet was prospering. Cush and Nubia was prospering. Yeah. That's how the Queen of Sheba could even go to you know, take a tribute to Solomon. And yeah. you read how massive her, her entourage was. But then we know historically that even that entourage was nothing compared to the Mansa. The Mansa, Musa, yeah. whose wealth was unimaginably Un large. Unlimited. It was, so, it was so large that he moved with 50,000 people in his entourage to go to his the Hajj yeah. in Mecca. Mecca. And he stopped in Egypt. And when he stopped in Cairo, Egypt, they say they had so much gold that they distorted the Egyptian the, economy the for 12 years. 12 years. The same way Solomon made gold as common as stones in, in, in Israel, in Jerusalem, in yeah, his day. Back, back then. It's the same way, or even, yeah, that Mansa Musa did. And so you see that we have a glorious history, uh, Ekene. Huh? We have a glorious history. We are not mediocre. This mediocrity was a programming that began in 1492, specifically, that's a topic for another yeah. day. It began in 1492 when certain people within the establishment declared a war against black people and began a deliberate expunging of history to where we are today. So we have yeah. to raise our standard 
back to our glorious level where we really are. And that's why you notice that a lot of black people, in spite of what they say about black people, we are behind so many inventions. When you begin to learn what black people have contributed to today in yeah. science and technology, you realize, okay, so there's something genetically powerful about black people, but the environment was purposefully destroyed so yeah. that the mediocrity becomes the norm. And so we must raise our standard number one. Number two, we must change our, our, our beliefs. And you know, when I, whenever I say that, people get confused because they think, <laughs> oh my God, is this guy saying, you know, discard Christian? I am not saying discard. I mean, come on. I'm a born again, spirit filled, tongue speaking Christian. I've not denied you. I will never deny Jesus. But I'm telling you to change your beliefs. <laughs> Why? Because it's the religiosity that is messing people up. It's the, it's the programming from the environment that has caused this state we see today in Africa where people actually believe they're inferior. You mm. know that, eh? You don't have to say I'm inferior. Your behavior will show yeah, me your that your behavior you is that. Mm -hmm. Yes, because, because you're so, you, you know, we are at a place, my brother, where whites are practically worshipped over here. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say that. And, I, and this is nothing to our white brothers and sisters because we're one in Christ. The Bible says there's no Jew, there's no slave, there's no whatever. We're all one. So the oneness of the world is true. But the black people have been so programmed by that white Jesus that hang on their sitting room, you know, mantle for years that they still see a white Jesus. Even if you ask some people, so you saw Jesus, yeah, what did he look like? They had long hair, blonde eyes, like, yeah, right. Yeah. That's not Jesus. You saw something else. Uh, see, <laughs> you know? but see, you know but, people don't understand you know, but, this. But that's the programming. Mm. Yeah, people don't understand this. The Jesus that walked the earth was not white. No. Okay. Now, does it matter, in truth, does it matter what color he was? No. But, but because of what the uh, European brothers Establishment. and sisters has yes. done using that image, it's mm. actually important that we, we understand that Jesus yes. that walked the earth 2,000 years ago was not European. Okay? No. He, li he lived, he was born, raised, and lived in the Middle East 2,000 years ago. Okay? So, he couldn't be be white. No. So, no. Our, our brothers and sisters in Africa need to understand this. You see, yeah. it's it's difficult, and this this is the question. very difficult, Akena, because you see, you you have to remember that this is the stuff that's programmed in the formative years, yes. and all your media, all your experience of media shows that. So, for example. God praise and God bless the people that did the Jesus video. We thank mm. God for the Jesus video. It's done wonders to evangelize. But the Jesus in the Jesus video is a white guy with long hair and blue eyes. All right. So essentially, there's still that imagery. You're going all the way into all these villages and you're using a, a, a video with a white Jesus. And yes. And and. Whether we like it or not, it's a meme, you know? In, in psychology and especially cognitive science, we speak about memes, that the mind works with pictures. And yeah. whatever pictures you program, yeah. they go into the subconscious and they become and form what we call archetypes. You know what I mean mm. by that? Huh? Yeah. These are archetypes. And these archetypes become a reference. And, and because the subconscious mind does not know good or bad, right or wrong, the subconscious mind is a blank. Blank thing. So yeah. it will always associate. It will yeah. associate. When, so whenever you when think you Jesus, you person, see a white man. Jesus, you white. see that white man. And so, yeah. and then what happens again when you see a white man? What do you see? What? You see God. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and whether you like it or not, it's, 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 it's deep. In the psyche, it's not that consciously you're saying that white man is God. Of course, he's not a God. But in your psyche, it's there. Yeah. And why is it there? That's why, that's why we have the skin bleaching industry, my brother. 
The yes. skin bleaching industry is part of the proof of self-hate mm -hmm. because people feel when they're black or dark, there's something wrong. So they have to be light like God because of the images. <laughs> That I, I, I challenge people, I challenge people to watch a video called The Doll Test. Please go on uh, YouTube and look for a, 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 a video called The Doll Test. It was in, conducted by, apparently it was invented in the 1940s by some scientists to showcase how color and racial response for children is yeah. and how race, you know, works to begin stereotyping negativity. It's such a moving video. And these scientists reproduced it. These producers reproduced it in 1995, I believe, 96 or whatever that was. Yeah. No, maybe 2005, I'm not sure. But they're Italians. And they did it because of this challenge with all these Mediterranean crossings, you know, all these um, uh, Africans that are migrating into Europe. And so there's a huge influx of, of all these foreigners and refugees. And so uh, there's second generation, first generation Black people in those countries who came as refugees through the ocean. And so these guys took the same test and did it again. And I tell you, Ekene, this video is, I mean, for people like you and me, I was moved to tears because they, they put these little dolls in front of these kids and nothing completely, one black doll and a white doll. Yeah. And they asked these kids to pick the doll. And all the black children, and they were talking about kids of five years old, yeah. four years old, six years old, and they picked the white doll. And, and you begin to realize something that I learned in cognitive science, that memories can be transmitted by DNA. I used to think that was a lie. It's very true. Go Google it. Again, I challenge those watching. Go Google on memories and transmission by DNA to the next generation. It's a scientifically proven fact. Yeah. So these children are not, they were not taught. Who taught them that a white doll is better than a black one? No one. So why are they showing this response? For me, the answer is because their parents were programmed that way. Mm. And that DNA has crossed to the next generation. Now, go back 400 years, my brother, Kenny. What does that do to yeah. people? What yeah. mess does it bring? You see, that, that's where I, 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 when I talk to Africans who, would, who go to the US and they become successful, relatively easy and they they are blaming african americans they think they are lazy i tell them no the programming the things, my brother the things they have gone through yes. for multiple generations you yes. in africa didn't go through it no it, for us in africa all of us were poor Okay, so yeah. we are equal. Okay, yeah. so we go to you go to America. The um, African Americans are poor, but the rest of the society live very differently from them. So from there's a difference, yes. and most of us that go to America, we don't actually live within a short space of time. We graduate from the from the from, from living with African Americans and will go to middle class neighborhoods. You yes. See? See? And furthermore, Ekene, just, just to carry that further, we, we, we actually, even when we go there, we are not of that culture. So, yeah. you know, uh, um, uh, our sense of community will cause us to gr to gravitate to our own community, community so yeah. if you have somalians they'll be in their own community if you have ghanaians they'll be in their own community if you have you know nigerians and so on and so forth kenyans and so essentially you don't really experience what what in they the do West yeah. of the word what an, a, a black American brother or sister yeah. has to grow with. Yeah. You don't experience that downtown, downtown in a urban area, in a city experience. It's just not, it doesn't compute because you're not part of that culture. Exactly. And here's an, here's an example, which we're now seeing in Africa. Uh, we see South Africa, we see the, the situation with xenophobia, which came up, yes. which by the way, which by the way, Ekene, let me be honest with you. I'll be very honest with you and to the listeners. 
xenophobia in its truest sense is a product of the mm. media. Mm. Yes, mm. let me say mm. that clearly so that it's understood. Because if you want to understand South Africa, get the whole picture. Yeah. Go into SA, get the statistics of how many people die daily due to violent crimes in Johannesburg, for example. Yeah. Get that picture. And then contrast it even with the time when there was high levels of xenophobia. Mm. Okay? Contrast how many people died from xenophobic violence and how many died in the same day from just senseless violence and yeah. crime. You see it's a contrast. It's less than 10%. But you see the media want to Blue push top. across a picture. They want to put across a picture. I was very sad because in the beginning, I really was shocked by the behavior of the South Africans, which I still understand. And of course, I'm angry with. But when I got the bigger picture, I said, wait a minute. This is the media doing what they always do. Mm. Amplify the stuff that doesn't matter to push a narrative, to push a story. Yeah. And sink down what doesn't matter because it doesn't suit their narrative. Mm. Because you see, the media is the new religion today. That's the new culture. <laughs> that's the new culture. It's the one that's dictating the programming for the next generation. Yeah. And yeah. so, my brother, the belief aspect, that second aspect, and I'll be closing with the last one, but that be belief component, it's a major one, Kenny. Yeah. It is the crux. It's the, for me, it's the fulcrum. It's the, it's the pivot. It's the one that will determine whether we progress or we don't because the beliefs are everything. Whatever you believe, it is right in yep. your eyes. So yep. whatever you see inside of you becomes. Thoughts are things. So yep. whatever you have been programmed to run with is what will become your reality Exactly. Ultimately. And that's exactly. why the establishment works very strongly with media. And you notice this media thing. I mean, never have I seen media more powerful than now during COVID. I mean, Trump with all his issues. But wh when, whoever thought that online platforms could knock down the account of a sitting president, a, 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 a social media. Yeah. I mean, you know, when I saw that, whatever people will say about Trump, for me, the one thing that proved is truly Big Brother is in control. You see, <laughs> if you are influential enough and your message does not align with the establishment, my mm. friend, they're pulling down your account. Louis Farrakhan has no account on any social media platform. Interesting. He's been effectively gagged. Yes. He's got no Facebook. He's got no Twitter. I'm not supporting Louis Farrakhan here. I'm just showing him as an example because he's so anti-establishment. Louis mm. Farrakhan has been anti-establishment since I knew him. And every single time he has nothing good to say about the establishment. And so they have gagged him, blocked him. There is no account for Louis Farrakhan, but we know he's followed by millions of people. Interesting. That shows the bigotry of the so-called freedom of expression. So if your freedom of expression, Ekene, suits the establishment, they will give you the biggest podium to make your noise from. Mm, but mm, the moment mm. you begin to go anti-establishment, the moment yeah. you begin to speak narratives deemed dangerous by God knows who, then all of a sudden they will pull out your account, they'll close your account. Recently, there's another white British guy called David Icke, very, very controversial oh, yeah. Yeah, man. I know him. That man garnered that that yes, that man garnered the largest online streaming incident in the history of mm. the internet and they gagged them and blocked everything well, you see, see and that uh, tells me I, I was i would say something about ike unfortunately mm -hmm. ike is spreading some dangerous very dangerous teaching i agree see <laughs> but for me i look at africa but isn't trump but wouldn't trump be called dangerous also who Trump. Uh, what about him? Isn't he dangerous also? Isn't that why they shut him down? Yeah, yeah. See, let's let's leave Trump uh, American politics. <laughs> let's let's let me just talk about Ike. See, yes. when I I I listen to Ike's interviews, okay, because I, I followed the people who interviewed him. Mm. And I said I what came to my mind is that oh my god, I don't want this 
to reach Africa. Because see, our people, like I said, are upset to you. Our people do not, majority of, of our people do not know how to dissect research. Yeah. Any, any information to see yeah. how true or false it is. Yeah. And I knew they would just swallow this thing. And I was scared for them. Hook, hook nail, and sinker. I see, see, that's 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 why I I don't right now I've I've, I've listened to a lot of Ike's interviews, a lot, a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Okay. So now I don't listen to him anymore because I know, yeah, he's, he's just going to repeat the same thing over and over again. But he's been saying it forever. Yes. So, so for anybody who has the ability to discern, yeah, go ahead and listen. But, but because, you see, the problem is the majority don't because yes, that's Ike, it. Ike, Ike has a very, very dangerous message that is inside his message. And I discovered it. Mm. So when I did, I said, whoa, okay. So I knew, I knew there was an agenda with this guy. It's a Gnostic agenda, but that's besides the point. Yeah. So belief is the number two. And I think, Ekena, you and I agree, we need to do some serious belief yes. changing in Africa. Yes. Because this white worship thing is bad. And which brings us to the last one now, change our strategy. Mm. Tell me, Ekena, and I know you're, you're the one interviewing me, but, but tell me. What do you believe is the major reason that 57 will now be 57 years, no, 58 years later, because 1st May uh, 2020 will be 58 years. Mm. So 58 years later, tell me, why have we not seen the United States of Africa? Oh, what? what in God's uh, name has not worked? <laughs> See, that, that <laughs> is a, it's a very interesting question. See, for me, for me, I want Africans to collaborate a lot, yes. as much Everyone as possible. And yes. if we can come together politically, that would be fantastic. One reason why, why I even, even like that, that is that it will, it will limit the power of any individual in any country. Yeah. If the country becomes just a state, that power, the army, the days, no, that power will, will be limited. See, yes. In, in, in any society, in any country, the most important government uh, group is the local community. Yes. Okay. Now in Africa, no, the federal the federal government is the most powerful. The the community <clears throat> doesn't have any money, doesn't have any power. Yeah. So they can't affect anything that concerns their people themselves. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So we need to change that totally. We need to change that totally. Now, so you can imagine, uh huh. Yeah, go on. I was going to say, so you, you, you can imagine a Kenny when Kwame Nkrumah, under the influence of Dubois and all these writings, and Marcus Gavi from a number of decades back, you know, when they all woke up, when this pan Africanism began. Mm. Did you know that out of 40, I believe it was 47 nations that met together for the first OAU summit in 1963. Some of them were not independent yet, mm. uh, but they all met. Out of those 47 countries, only seven, of which interestingly, five were Arabia, uh, Arabic countries, mm. what you call African Arabic countries, yes. Egypt, Tunisia, Morocco. Yes. So <clears throat> out of these countries, only seven, we are willing to go the regional route. Yeah. The remaining 40 were for nationalism. Mm. I believe that was our first greatest mistake as Africa. Yes. It, and so it because is. we went because we went national, uh, we never 
had the opportunity and you know i listened to some amazing speeches you know because of my voracious study of history i went back to listen to the entire and i know it sounds mad because i would never be caught dead listening to the au and their boring meetings but <laughs> i went i went back to 1963 i had to you know listen to kwame and listen to all these the gambian guy and the senegalese guys you know as they gave these inaugural speeches and haile selassie the emperor you know it, 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 and it was amazing i was like man these people these people had it. They had it. Where did we miss it? So obviously we have to take responsibility. We, we know that, of course, outside forces were at work and they did not want to see that happen. So they came and we, and it was very direct. I mean, those yeah. days, it wasn't a joke. I mean, your CIA, everybody was in Africa's yeah. business, you know, making sure that, you know, you depose of rulers and, and, you know, we saw what happened in Congo. So it's not a secret, yeah. but it's still amazing. It's still amazing to see that even into the 90s, 2000s i mean they changed it to au because they realized that the old mandate wasn't working so let's mm. rebrand this thing but but you know even 2013 we rebranded we were still fighting just to get a common trade area yeah I, i'm hoping it'll happen now but we still haven't even got a common trade area, area. yet yeah. but, but 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 we're seeing that we have to change the strategy in short that's my third and final point after the foundation of blame and then change, you know, raise standards, change beliefs, change strategy. We yeah. have to change the strategy because we've been singing this song for the last- A long God time. Knows how many A decades. long time. We yeah. have not seen the change. So where's the problem? Now, of course, there are some people who say guys like um, Muhammad Gaddafi was a pan-Africanist. And so they took him out for whatever reason. But at the end of the day, it's still the fact that we have to own this. Uh, and I don't really like quoting Maponga because I think it's very controversial. But Bishop Maponga makes a very, very good point mm. in one of his uh, teachings. He says, we have to Africanize. Mm. Well, we can't keep you know, bringing these foreign concepts and trying to impose them on the people damaged by decades of bad programming. We have to Africanize. We have to first identify, get back to our true identity. One of the reasons I've been preaching this message, which sounds almost contrarian considering I'm a Christian, is because the greatest way to destroy a people is to change their identity, mm. mess with their identity. Yeah. And once you mess with the identity, it's a true, it's a tree without roots. Now it's standing on soil alone. Yeah. It has absolutely no, you know, roots that go into the depths of the ground to draw nutrients. And I know a lot of people say, now we're a global community. We have a new identity. No, that's a lot no, of baloney. No. We need to get back to our roots as Africans. And I'm not saying we start worshiping mountains. I don't believe in that. But what <laughs> I'm saying is we need to get back to our identity. Who are, who is an African? Who are you, my brother? Who am I? Where do we come from? Where is our roots? And you will be shocked to learn, Akene, that our root goes back places you don't even want to know. Mm, and that's mm, why the establishment mm, 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 has worked round the clock to hide that truth. In Africa today, we learn about Bismarck. We learn about Saskatchewan. Who, why are we learning about European history? I mean, Bonaparte. Who cares about Bonaparte? Why don't we learn about Mansa Musa? Why don't we learn about the Ethiopic kingdoms and the yeah. Kush and the yeah. Negev and, and the Great Zimbabwe so, so, so and the Benin the, Wall? The, the, the answer to things. the question, we need to start with education. Yes. We need to start with African history. Mm. Now, the, the, my next the true question, African history. My, yes, we need to start with those things. Now, also, we need to elevate the study of science. You see, because we can't in this in this era, you cannot do anything if you don't understand science. Correct. See, a pastor in Nigeria made a video a few weeks ago where he he challenged us that why can't we make our own vaccines? Why can't we make our medicines? Why do we need to go to the other countries to get these things? 
Okay. Now I will say this. When I saw the video, I was annoyed with him because before this particular video, all he has done was to destroy science. Anything science scientific he complains about. Now you come out and say, why, why don't you do this? For me, I say, yes, we don't do it. We, we don't do this because of people like you who destroy anything. You don't, you don't encourage your people to study science. Yeah. You, can't make, you can't make modern medicine vaccines if you don't study science. Sure. Okay. Now, we all use uh, mobile phones. We are on Zoom. All these things were made by people who study science, who understand science, and built all these things. So for Africa to elevate, to be equal with the other countries in the world, the other regions of the world, we also need to elevate the study an appreciation of science. Couldn't agree more, Ekene. You see, one of the things that's so sad, and that's why I say we need to get back to our roots. Mm. Did you know, did you know that when we talk about Benin and the, and the kingdom that operated from there, yeah. we talk about the Mansas, you know, the Mansas where you have Mansa Musa, yeah. which Mansa is the title. Uh, you talk about Egypt, you talk about uh, Kush, Kush, you talk about yeah. the great Zimbabwe and whatever or society operated there. Did you know that all these were based on science? Science yes. was part of their knowledge uh, terrain. Alexandria was full of mathematical, uh, you know, study. Uh, the pyramids, I mean, we can argue all day about who built the pyramids and who, 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 <laughs> but the point is they built them. They built them and those were black people, okay? Yeah. Whether people like it or there were black people that built those pyramids. So, which means we were the scientific. bastion of we're back knowledge, then. scientific mm -hmm. knowledge. So, somewhere down the line, something happened and, yeah. and all that disappeared. And so, it's very sad, for example, and you know, I like making fun of this because, you know, as a Pentecostal charismatic Christian, I just have to take a swipe at ourselves. <laughs> you know, this COVID thing right now? You know, yeah. all of a sudden, here, here in my country, steaming is popular now, you know. We all know that you can steam and, you know, you, you put eucalyptus oil in there and you steam for 10 minutes and it's very, very good because it burns and kills all the COVID whatever. Mm. Now, my brother, I am a charismatic Pentecostal and I was saved at a time when steaming was called demonic. Mm. 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 Shame. Shame on every preacher and every pastor, and I'm saying this without apology. Shame on every preacher and pastor who called steaming demonic. Yet our traditional medicine teachers were saying that this is the best way to treat a number of diseases. Yeah. Okay, and they would give you specific leaves and roots and herbs that you could use. Let's even go further. The Chinese have the one of the most advanced homeopathic yeah. uh, study library in the world. They the were yeah. doing homeopathy from 5,000 years ago. Oh, yeah. And they wrote all this stuff down and documented it. And we know it's a proper science, yes. including things people brand as demonic. For example, they brand acupuncture demonic. They brand <laughs> I, see, I do demonic. I do acupuncture because of my, my stroke. Thank you. I do it. And, and you see, and you see, let me tell you something. I did a full study on herbal and natural medicine. So mm. nobody can come and tell me about acupuncture being demonic because I've done studies on it. And it's a different kind of science. Just yes. because it doesn't align with your traditional Western medicine doesn't render it no, demonic. See, see sci science is not based on any region. Science no. is a me methodology, okay? So Correct. We, can, we can observe, we can use and then, you know, our herbs, observe. we can yeah. study our, our herbs in a scientific method and document the experiments. And then Correct. Other, other, other people can now 
read it and adopt it. See, that's the only because way. Because you see why? The, 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 the beauty, the beauty uh, kind of with science is that it follows methodology. That's why yes. I argue with things like evolution. Because you see, evolution, nobody sat there to prove it. Nobody sat there to observe it. Well, because science see, is based on we, observation. We, we talk, you we'll know? talk about that observation in, a, in, another, my... in another, uh, another uh, show. <laughs> but I tell you, that has been proved yes. beyond any reasonable no, it hasn't. Anyway, <laughs> we agree to disagree. All right. So anyway, but but the point is that you see, Akene, you have to observe, okay? Yes. And then when you observe, you can repeat. You see, that's what makes science so powerful. Yes. Once you observe, you can draw laws. And yeah. to make a law become a law, it means you can replicate it yeah. and get the same measurable, same result. predictable yeah. result. Yes. You see what I mean? Huh? Yes. Then it's a law. So, so before you can do that, it can't be a law because you have to repeat the circumstances to produce the result. Yeah. And so you look at herbal medicine, you see that when David Livingston came to Africa, he died of malaria, but everybody in Africa was chewing on a bark. And, and they were chewing on that bark because they knew that when you chew on this bark, you develop an immunity against these, um, these mosquitoes, mosquitoes and whatever the mosquitoes were carrying. So later on, they discovered that the active ingredient is quinine from those barks, which they then extracted to make the modern day medicines, mm. which deal with malaria. And then you're going to come and tell me that herb, herbal medicine is demonic. Excuse me. What you need to do is get to understand that under all that is a science, okay? Yes. yes, there are those who use mystical powers and they'll get guidance from spiritual guides. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> but let's not, you know, let's not divorce the fact that at the base of this, <laughs> at the base of this is a science, Yes. okay? And, and so this is one of the problems that we've been facing, my brother. In fact, I'll be very honest with you. At the height of the charismatic movement, one of the most foolish, dangerous teachings that were going around was telling people about divine healing. Mm. And I used to gawk in shock because, you see, as a, as a studier of homeopathic medicine, I know there are eight doctors God put on earth. Eight of them. Eight of them. Mm. And to drop seven and only run with one, which is trust in God, and leave all these other seven, for me, it's crazy. And that's exactly what these people are doing. And then we know we have historical proof of the number of people that would flush, you know, AR, their ARVs and all sorts of medicines uh, because they believe they've received faith for healing and they would die two weeks later. You see, mm. that was foolishness because there is nothing wrong with medicine. And then, yes, we have cases where people get healed completely and they don't have to take their medicines anymore, but yeah. it's not the norm. This is what is called a miracle. It can't be replicated, but I can give you herbal medicine, my brother, today. Yeah. And it can actually counter the effects of HIV. I can yeah. give you herbal medicine today and it can actually counter the effect of cancer. I can give you herbal medicine today. It can even counter many of the effects of COVID-19. Mm. I am not saying they are, they are cures. That's not what I'm saying because I don't yeah. want to be misquoted here. I am saying that we have herbal remedies and they make perfect sense because herbal remedies are based on food. And, it, and my brother, you and I are healing today. You and I are okay today because of the food we eat. We are sick because of the food we eat. Yeah. So the food is the primary medicine in life. And yes. if the food is wrong, everything is wrong. wrong. And so the study, you know, it's, it's, and going back again to this whole preaching and, and, and mis, mis, misinterpretation of, of science, this is the classic case where you have people standing on a queue praying to God to, he, to be healed from diabetes and, and hypertension on a queue, but they are weighing 250 pounds. Okay, okay, <laughs> we are pretty, so yeah. they're, weighing, they're, they're weighing 150 kg. How the heck are you going to be healed from BP with 150 kg? You're, you're, you're overweight. Yeah. You need to get into some 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 regimen to lose weight. You know to start cleaning your arteries, and you don't clean your arteries by taking aspirin. That's making the situation worse. No, you clear your arteries by taking uh, detoxifiers that begin to clear the arteries of all the fat that is coagulated in there over the years. And there are herbal remedies that do this perfectly. Mm. But of course they won't tell you that because mm. they want you to keep taking those drugs because Big Pharma makes a killing 
out of getting people to be medicine people for life. You yeah. know, just taking all these drugs when God has given us the natural means. But the church people have also turned the natural means and called them demonic. And then they've also thrown away the big pharma and they're going by divine healing. That is foolishness as well. Mm, mm, mm. Now, see, this, this has been a very, very interesting talk. Uh, my last yes. question. <laughs> I know you mentioned uh, meditation. Now, I started a series of uh, meditation practices one year ago. Before then, I had never, never done meditation. What do you think about meditation? My view on meditation is this. That again, like I keep saying, there are two forms of spirituality because meditation is a spiritual exercise. Let's, at least let's get that part right. Mm. But like I told you, there are two forms of spirituality. There is the spirituality that leads to a higher source and there's a spirituality which leads to another source. Mm. And that other source, it mm. comes from what I call the pursuit of self. Okay. You see, you see, man has always had deep within themselves the sense of God. Why? Because we are a part of God. So you see, God literally took his breath and breathed it into this thing. And this thing became a living soul. Uh, with his spirit inside of us. And so we are essentially a God particle. We're okay. an essence of God. Now in uh, Gnosticism, they, they say that we are actually an expression of the greater uh, consciousness in the universe. I don't, I don't agree with that teaching. Okay. But that's not the topic here. <laughs> but, no, I don't, I don't. But, but the concept is interestingly correct because... God breathed into man. And so every single human being that exists on this planet and existed is essentially coming from God, right? Okay. It's almost as if God takes an essence of himself and breathes that into this, this, this case, this thing, this body. And, and, and so it becomes an expression in this reality, mm. in this juncture, in this uh, reality called space-time. Now, meditation. When individuals want to reconnect to that higher source, mm. there are essentially two ways that happens. You can connect to this source, the one I, I proclaim, or you can connect to another source. Okay. Because there are many, many, many spiritual beings in that uh, lineup. Okay. And by connecting to the other source, it starts with a journey into self. And in that journey, the exercises are very, very similar. Mm. Very, very similar. What happens in meditation is transcendence takes place. In, in cognitive science, we are taught, and I agree with this teaching totally, that there is a divider between your subconscious mind and your conscious mind. The irony of life is that the conscious mind you and I possess right now only operate 5% of our waking time. Mm. 95% of our waking time is operated by our subconscious mind. Mm. So all the things you do, which you do without thinking about, are not coming from your conscious mind. They are coming from your subconscious mind. Okay. And so this means whatever that subconscious mind is programmed with is always what overrides what your conscious mind wants. That's why the things you don't want to do, you do. And the things you want to do, you don't do. It's yeah. because the, there's an override from this subconscious That's mind. A, a possible. In, <laughs> You know what I mean? Huh? Yeah. Now, in meditation, this is the interesting part. In meditation, the barrier that blocks the conscious from the subconscious is eradicated. Mm, mm. But to do that, there's a state of mind you must transcend to. And I don't want to go into that because we're going to start another topic. But let's just say you need to transcend into that. And what's so interesting, Ekene, is that the process of transcendence from the outside is virtually identical. If you walk into a charismatic meeting and you see people having the Holy Spirit, yeah. <laughs> or you walk into, into a meditation place and you see people having a transcendental event, the, the state of mind is virtually identical. Mm. If you plug them onto machines mm. yeah. and put sensors on them, e e you will EGC. see the same brain waves. Yeah. Yes. 
ECG, you will see the same brain waves. Yeah. They are called, uh, not alpha, but there's the next wave, uh, theta. They go into a yeah. theta wave phase. Mm. So theta wave phase, that's what they go into. It's at this theta wave phase where, for those of us that believe in God, something happens. Your spiritual uh, environment and your soul begin to connect. Mm. And so the essence that's in the spiritual realm can then begin to be transmitted into this body. Okay. So for mm -hmm. instance, healing and many other things can take place when this transcendence happens. Personally, as a believer, as a Christian, I believe the best guide out there is the Holy Spirit. Mm. Because the Holy Spirit will take you in this transcendent state and then connect you to the creator. Okay. Like that, because he is the creator. And so there is a direct connection to the source. I have my reservations with the other methods because there's a connecting to some other power. Okay. And I have seen a number of people who have not done it correctly go into some crazy spaces. And even so, also with the charismatics, there are a number of people who think they are experiencing a transcendent experience coming from the Holy Spirit of God. But in reality, it is not the Holy Spirit of God. Okay. And so they See, end up going in the wrong what, way. Water, this is a, 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 an interesting topic which uh, I would like to explore with you some other time. See, uh, you have done fantastic, okay? Uh, you have uh, explained a lot of things, okay? Which my, my audience will appreciate. Uh, I want to thank you for giving me two hours of your time, okay? Uh, I thank you. And I hope uh, when this COVID thing is over, when I start uh, exploring Africa, I will meet you, okay? I will be in, yes. in Zambia and I will, I I will definitely you. meet you, okay? So thank you, thank you very much for this session. Thank you. Indeed. And also for me, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Akene, you know, any time when we can be able to be of, of insight to people out there, you know, this is a very diverse audience. And so it's always a privilege for me to be of service through uh, taking time out like this. I'm actually having protests from my family here because ah. they want to get on with their teeth and other things. And so I've literally <laughs> brought everything to a start because of this interview. So, so obviously I'm extremely grateful for that, Akene. And I am praying we continue interacting, especially through the medium of WhatsApp. Yeah. We are connected now. So, yes. so let us continue doing so. And as soon as you share this, I'm sure you'll break this into three parts. Oh, I, I need to break it. it. I, I need to break it. <laughs> yeah. Because most people on social media will not sit this long. Yes. Unless they yes. are very, very, you know, keen. So we're looking forward to all those parts you share with me and I'll happily also share them on my platform. Th thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take care, man. Take care. Bye. All the best. Cheers. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Listen or watch more episodes of Think Big for Africa podcast with new guests every week. Subscribe to ensure that you are notified whenever new episodes are available.